getting qualified for the best car loans and incentivize manufacturers rates and a boosting credit bonus at the end. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today isn't so much about car buying as it is about the mechanics of financing a car. Today, we're going to talk about getting approved for the best car loans and incentivized rates and boosting your credit if needed. And we hope to give you such great value you consider subscribing if you're not already on board with us. We talk a lot about cash deals here on this channel. Unfortunately, in today's world, pretty much everything runs on credit. Pretty much everything. Yeah. Apply for a management level job and they run your credit. Apply for an apartment, they run your credit. Try to get a good rate on car insurance and they run your credit. So managing your credit wisely is just plain smart and it makes everything cheaper. As always, if you do need a car loan, talk to your own bank or credit union first. So always take that step first. Yep. So today we're going to discuss the three important C's of credit, particularly as they apply to car loans and give you some insight as to how we've managed to build and maintain very good to excellent credit, even without carrying a car loan ourselves. That's key because many people understand that you must have a car loan to build credit. That's false. Before we get into the specifics of the three C's, let's illustrate the brackets of credit people generally fall into. First, there is exceptional credit, 800 to 850, these FICO scores ranging from 800 to 850 are considered exceptional or excellent. That's the top. Then there's very good credit, 740 to 799. The 740 to 850 range pretty much qualifies for anything. The best of the best that's yeah. out there. Then comes good or average credit, 670 to 739. Finally, there is fair credit, which is subprime, 580 to 669. And lastly, poor credit, deep subprime, 300 to 579. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. So where do most people sit? The average credit score in the United States right now is at an all-time high of 711. This coinc 711, that's very good. Yeah, it's slurpy time. <laughs> this coincides with what the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau defines as prime or prime lending. Interestingly enough, about one in five American adults have either no credit history, credit invisible, or are unscorable. As a result, these individuals will have difficulty obtaining any kind of new credit lines. If you're out car shopping and you do have a credit score, but you unfortunately are either in the subprime or deep subprime category, God help you. <laughs> you are one of the ones who can afford to pay the least, yet yeah. will pay the most for a car loan. You're a sitting duck. The car business lovingly refers to you as a get me done. And it's generally a very shady finance officer who is standing by waiting to scalp you. Ouch. We want to help you move up a bracket or two regardless of where you're at now, credit-wise, and avoid taking a financial beating. This will help you save tons of money. So let's get started with the three C's. They are cash, credit, and character. Cash is pretty much straightforward. How much of your own money do you have to work with? How much are you able to reduce the loan balance ratio to the actual cash value of the car? And how much do you currently earn? Cash down is important because it reduces the risk to the banker if you happen to default. Lower risk means lower interest rates. And then how much do you earn and how much debt are you carrying against that income? Yeah. Debt to income ratio, essentially. Are you tapped out or do you have room for an extra expense? How much can you afford to pay each month for an additional loan? The next C is credit. What credit bracket do you fit in? Do you have excellent credit, average credit, or poor credit? What debt level are you currently carrying? What's your debt to income ratio? If your credit is a little tarnished, how consistently have you paid your previous car payments? You're asking for a car loan, so your attention to paying car debt on time in the past is a very meaningful consideration to the banker. They definitely look at your past car loans. Yeah. The last C is character. Who are you and what do you do professionally for work? How long have you stayed at your job? If you bounce around from job to job, your income is very unstable and could have some very long pauses. We know a few people like that, right? Yeah. All right, and that's not good. That's not good. How long have you lived at your current address? Is this your third or fourth apartment or house in the last few years? It begs the question, fair or not, are you running from something? Do you have several collection companies on your tail? Could your bank account balances be seized overnight by a court order? Is your credit report full of frivolous debt? When questions like this come up, the bank isn't sure what you're up to, and arguably, perhaps, neither are you. <laughs> Have you always paid your house payments, and how seriously do you take major debt? So the bottom line is, if you have good or excellent credit, you have some cash to work with, 
and you look like a stable and reliable prospect for a car loan, you're going to get financed at the very best rates available out there. You have very good credit, right, Liz? Yeah. All right. And yet, you haven't taken out a car loan in years, right? Nope. All right. Do you mind sharing your strategy for getting and keeping your credit score high? Well, absolutely. So early in life, I had to get established like many of the other younger viewers here on this channel. It was a bit challenging at first, but I got great advice from a mentor on pulling a secured loan from my credit union. It's super simple to do. You take $500 or $1,000 to your local credit union, get an account if you don't already have one, and then you deposit that money. Then you speak to a loan officer and tell them that you want to pull a secured loan against your own money. They freeze the cash in the account and write you a check for the loan. Now you notice Liz said she had a mentor and you notice how brilliant she is. She's had mentors early on in life. In fact, many of the people that she hung around with were her much older uncles that lived in the area around her family home. So pays to have good mentors at a young age. Sure. So anyhow, with this secured loan, you get the money back right away. You get it back right away. So anyone who has money to pay rent even can use that cash to pull a secured loan. You get it back immediately so you can use it to pay your bills. So from there, you give it some time, you pay it off month by month and show a good payment history. And you wait six to 12 months maybe, and then apply for a Visa, MasterCard, or even Discover card. Discover is a bit easier to get, so you could try going that route first. Now it's absolutely critical how you manage that card. You have to use it, but only use it for the things you'd be spending your hard earned money on. And then don't just go out and spend the money on something else. You have to pay off the card right away. So what I do, I go to the store, I buy all my groceries and my incidentals every month. And five days before the- uh, Things like gas. Yeah, gasoline. Five days before the uh, statement is generated or the, on my credit card, I pay it off, wipe it down to nothing, and then it gets reported that I've used the card, but the balance is zero, or the balance is a very small amount. The general guidance is to never use more than 30% of your available credit line on the card. Sure, so some sometimes around zero, or sometimes they keep it around 15%, so um, that's the best, actually, so let me explain why. Uh, with Discover, they watch the card closely, and every time that the balance stays that low, they bounce up the limits, of, and they've done it several times for me because you proved you could manage a higher credit line. Right, and the more they bump it up, the higher my credit score goes automatically really without doing anything. So FICO likes it that my credit card company trusts me with a higher credit limit. It's a win-win all the way around. I have personally done the secured loan against a cash deposit many times myself, and I can confirm that it is very easy to do, just as Liz said. In fact, you can do it all in one trip. Yeah. Even if you don't have an account at the credit union, you go in there, Tell me you want to open an account, sit down and ask for an appointment with a loan officer right away. Yep. Also, it's really key that you keep the use of your credit lines at a minimum. I carry very little on my cards. Proving that you can effectively manage a credit line is just as important as timely payment, and it goes a long way toward rapidly increasing your credit score. There you have it, folks. That's how both of us have excellent credit. It's your credit, so manage it well. If you learned something today and you'd like to say thanks for our video with a tip, the links appearing now will be easy to find down below. And if you appreciate the video, we'd appreciate you giving us a great big thumbs up. And please always remember to comment and share with family and friends. And if you're not already on board with us, please don't forget to subscribe. The entire Homework Guide team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. And that's what we strive to do in every video we produce. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.